in this video i'll talk about how to perform uh, nonlinear regression in sas uh, make sure that you have gone through uh, the video on nonlinear regression in this channel before going through this uh, video uh, in the uh, previous video on nonlinear regression i have discussed about what is uh, nonlinear regression uh, you know what is the criteria or what is the uh, you know, you know what are the things that are uh, important uh, to categorize a regression equation as uh, nonlinear uh, regression equation? To demonstrate this, I'll take an example. The example is like this: uh, I want to know the population of countries, uh, given that a population is a function of rate of growth of population. So, uh, as I as I have already discussed in the uh, uh, previous video, that we use nonlinear regression where we have a clear uh, uh, functional form of the relations between dependent and independent variables. I have got one independent variable and one dependent variable. My dependent variable is population here, and the independent variable is rate of growth of population. Well, by uh, some way, some theoretical way, I know that my uh, equations, my equation bit, uh, or the function that defines the relations between population and rate of uh, growth of population is something like this. Okay, so population is delta plus alpha minus delta by 1 plus exponential of beta into so I should put into here multiplied by log of well in the place of x I'll write rate rate that means rate of growth of population by gamma plus the error term so uh, see how many uh, parameters are there delta is one parameter alpha is the second parameter uh, beta is the third parameter and gamma is the fourth parameter so there are four parameters involved in this equations uh, between population and rate so population is my dependent variable here and rate is my independent variable so uh, the uh, objective is to find out the values of delta alpha beta and gamma the four different parameters uh, in the uh, equations and we need to estimate for these parameters for this I have got the data set in place you can take a look at it I have got the rate as well as the population um, I have already run it this data set POP uh, is created in my work library when I run this uh, code I will have this data set in my work library I have already run this of course you can uh, run it for yourself if you want the code just let me know how do we fit um, a nonlinear regression uh, function to the uh, this data set we use proc nlin in sas to do that syntax you can see on the screen let me explain it for you proc nlin data and then give your data set name okay followed by parameters so that's a SAS keyword you can see it's blue right so parameters and then you have to initialize the parameters we have got four parameters we need to initialize them we need to give a starting value that's what I mean by initialization alpha equal to 100 delta equal to 4 beta equal to 2.0 gamma is you know uh, 0.2 you must be wondering uh, how do i know these values the starting values i'll talk about it in some time okay and then we define the model like we do in proc reg proc logistic or any other regression model in the model statement we define uh, or we give the functional form of the model as an input so uh, it's exactly the same that we have written 
at the top we just write it here and remember the parameters name can be given any SAS uh, you know valid SAS name um, so it you can put A B C any name I have put mnemonics uh, alpha beta gamma you can give any name there okay so uh, exactly the same equation is uh, you know written here and then uh, the functional form you know is something that is very important for the model so make sure that functional form is given very correctly uh, the brackets and all are uh, uh, well taken care of when you run this okay it ran very fast but sometimes it may take uh, a lot of time um, so let's go through the uh, results the uh, in the result section or in the model output window you will see that uh, the gauss newton method algorithm is used for finding out the parameters detail about gauss newton just uh, you know uh, you can just google it and learn uh, what is gauss newton algorithm and there are seven iteration that has happened if you remember in the last video i have talked about how the estimation happens we start with initial values and then the algorithm keep improving the values uh, uh, to find out the best fit to the data so you can see in the iteration 0 whatever you know initial value values uh, we have given is what the algorithm takes then the algorithm find out better values to that something that fits the data in a better way okay you can see the sum of the squares now it has gone down right from 6000 to it's now close to 4000 we want the sum of the square of the error should be as minimum as possible right that's what even we do that in the uh, ordinary least square right so it's similar if not exactly same it's similar then in the next you can see uh, there is slight change in the parameters and the sum of the square it's going down even further with every step you can see but after one point of time like after the third step there is hardly any change in the sum of the squares 3781.8 3781.7 and it continues till the seventh step so uh, when there is hardly any change in the sum of the squares value we say that the algorithm has converged or there cannot be any further improvement in the parameter value or we can say that we have got the best fit uh, for this data so um, you know that that's the final set of parameters that we have so this set of parameters are the final set of parameters so I've got seven iteration to come up with that set of parameters okay so some important things to note uh, you will get uh, the error sum of square and uh, the total sum of square errors as well um, then the parameters the final parameters values you have alpha delta beta and gamma so the final estimates are given uh, in, in a separate table you can see the corresponding standard error corresponding standard error uh, for all the parameters and their confidence interval at 95 percent confidence limit um, we, we are familiar with these statistics in the uh, linear regression but the only difference between the linear regression standard error and the non-linear regression standard error is that in the non-linear regression standard uh, in in the non-linear regression the standard uh, error is is asymptotic in nature so what do we uh, mean by asymptotic well if you keep on increasing the size of the data uh, we'll get a more accurate standard error okay so for an infinite data we get the best uh, or the most accurate standard error so the bigger is the size of the data the better fit we get uh, 
for for uh, you know the functional form and the parameters uh, are more stable in nature uh, if we have a large data set in place okay you know we are living in the age of big data so this is not going to be a problem if a large volume of data fitting a nonlinear equation is always recommended but only issue is that it could it could take a lot of time for the algorithm to converge uh, that's uh, you know one issue with nonlinear regression it takes a lot of computing time finally you have a correlation matrix uh, it talks about the correlation between the uh, parameters something you might not have come across in the uh, linear regression models right so that's very specific to the long linear regression models well why is it so because uh, the uh, the parameters are correlated among themselves in nonlinear regression that means they are dependent on each other if you change the parameter or, or the value of one parameter the value of other parameters will change accordingly okay so that's a special feature of uh, you know the uh, nonlinear regression model sometime looking at the correlation matrix we can get to know that whether the model has act or the algorithm has been able to find out a best fit model or not it's difficult from uh, at this point in time to talk about that little that is little advanced in nature but uh, we have uh, a different statistic that we can use to find out the model fitness or the uh, uh, goodness of fit in, of the model so remember what do we use for goodness of fit for linear regressions well that is r square right the uh, coefficient of correlation or uh, the it's the r square value is used for measuring the goodness of fit in linear regression do we have a corresponding or a similar uh, statistic in nonlinear regression or do we have r square in nonlinear regression unfortunately we don't have it why so because for computing r square we need an intercept and in nonlinear regression models most of the times we won't be having any uh, intercepts okay so we, we actually don't have a r square value here but we can still use uh, you know some kind of uh, some kind of a statistic we call it pseudo r square okay it's a pseudo r square uh, the spelling is wrong pseudo r square which is 1 minus residual sum of the error square by total sum of this uh, error square and by looking at it we can get to know whether the model uh, the goodness of the fit of the model is good or not good enough or not okay that lies between 0 and 1 and if it is closer to 1 we say that the model is a good model okay so that's about the goodness of fit um, yeah so one question that I raised uh, a little earlier is that how do we know about the starting values well it's very difficult Sometimes we get to know it by common sense because as I said nonlinear regression are, or regression models are used in cases where we have good understanding about the, uh, the functional form. So usually we have some idea about the parameter estimate if not a, you know a detailed idea about it. So uh, you know before even fitting the uh, model we know what could potentially be the value of delta. You know from our uh, previous experiences okay so whoever is doing research on a particular problem could have come across a lot more models related to that so you know some experience but still you are not very sure about it so how do we you know deal with this uh, particular uh, uh, you know confusion well we have the option of you know doing it by mentioning an interval Okay. Say for example, we don't know what is going to be the value of beta. Okay, we are not sure about the starting value, but we know that it could lie between one and two. Okay, so the starting value we have used here is beta one to two by 0.5. Okay, 
so the starting value will start from 1 then 1.5 and then 2 so there will be three starting values here so whichever is the most suitable one will be chosen by the algorithm similarly for gamma we don't know what value it takes so we start with 0.1 and increment it by 0.1 up to 0.4 okay so that's how we choose an interval to find out uh, which one uh, or which value is the most suitable starting value for the algorithm and the algorithm takes care of the uh, best value out of the group of values okay so uh, that's about uh, you know fitting a nonlinear regression in a, uh, in SAS uh, you know, just to summarize, you can use PROC NLIN in SAS to fit a nonlinear regression. There is no R square kind of a goodness of fit uh, statistic in this. We use pseudo R square. Most of the times, you won't have uh, you won't have intercept uh, of the uh, of the model. Okay, and uh, it's always good to have a large data set for this kind of a model. Uh, because the parameters will be more stable and uh, you know it, you'll get a very good model so always want to have as many uh, data points as possible that's all thank you